Hey guys and welcome to episode 19 of how to be a 3D animator. In the previous video we talked about constraints in general so if you guys haven't watched that I suggest going back and watching that. In this video we're going to be talking about sword constraints in particular. We're going to be learning how to constraint a sword or weapons to the hand and I feel like this is the best way to do it. This is my opinion, uh, so don't sue me. I'm sure there are better ways to do anything. So if you guys learn anything, that's great, that's awesome. If you have a better way of doing this, perfect. Just leave a comment down below and help other subscribers out. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump right into this week's video. Okay, so here's a very simple way of doing this. First, either make a sword or download an obj of a sword we're just gonna go ahead with this very poorly modeled version i made in like a few seconds we're gonna pretend this is a katana or a sword um, it could be any weapon of course uh let's bring it all the way down so we're gonna go ahead and create some curves so i'm going to create nerps primitives and then circle we're going to use this as our controller so go ahead and place this on where you would like the sword to swing from, which would be the handle. So I'm just gonna place mine right here, rotating it 90 degrees, there we go. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. Now go ahead and duplicate your curve um, by pressing Shift D. Now scale it down a little bit so it's smaller than your other controller. And don't worry, we're almost done. We're almost done. We're like 70% of the way there. Now go ahead and select your sword. Go to modify and freeze transformation. Now what this does is it clears out all the attributes. So it clears out the scale, the rotation, the translate, and makes this the default position of the object. So it just, it makes this the default. And when you turn the translate and rotate to zero, it goes to this. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the curves. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna be pressing G because G duplicates your last action. So we're just freezing the transformation for the curves as well. And as you guys can see, the attributes over here are now zero, except for scale because scale, scale's default is one. Now go ahead and open your outliner. And we're going to name the big circle but I'm gonna double click on it on the, on the outliner and rename it main underscore CTL. CTL stands for controller. And we're going to make this name the small one offset underscore CTL. You guys will understand the naming in a little bit. This is the last bit. Uh, go ahead and with the middle mouse, drag the mesh into offset CTL. So I'm just middle mouse holding it into offset underscore control and then again with the middle mouse i'm dragging offset control into main control so now if we open this up we have main controlling offset and offset controlling our sword let's just name that sword underscore geo so the main controller controls everything the offset controls just the sword but it's being driven by the main controller. Okay, so there's only one more step actually. You guys have to pause the video and absolutely smash that like button. Okay, okay, okay. No, but, but really, that's we're pretty much done. So now we're just going to use the main controller, the big circle, the big control, and bring it to the desired position. In this case, it'll be under the hand. Okay, and now I'm going to constrain the main controller to the hand so the hand will control the main controller so i'm selecting the ik control shift selecting the big the main control changing modeling to animation going to constraint parent right so we just parent constraint the arm to the sword or rather the sword to the arm so now when we move the arm around the sword should move with the arm now, you may be asking, why did we create two controllers and not just one if we're just going to constraint one? Well, here's why. Let me just animate this real quick. So we'll say we have an attacking animation and we want to add some more weight to the sword or maybe the sword shifts in the hand. How would we go about that? 
Well, good thing we got that second controller. So we're gonna go ahead and click our inner controller, our offset control. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and key it. And here, I'm gonna add some weight to it. And I can, while the sword is still following the hand, I can still shift it, shift the sword and set keys on it inside the hand. So I'm shifting the sword backwards here, setting a key and then having it overshoot here and then settle back in. So now we have a drag on the sword and an overshoot and then settle even though it's constrained to the hand. And all right, that's that's literally it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, make sure to smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think or if you have a better way of doing this. Or if you think this is the ultimate way and I am just amazing, that works too. You can leave a comment about that too. On other news, we actually just got our first Patreon. At the time of the recording, it's been like three days. So I'm like, I'm, I'm speechless. Thank you so much. I'm gonna have your name across the screen right now since you're the only Patreon so far. I appreciate your support and I hope you're finding the PDF helpful. I'll, again, I'll be updating the PDF. Um, I'm gonna be updating it a couple times throughout this month. And then after this month, I'll be, once it's caught up to all the lessons, um, every month I'll be updating the PDF as well so you guys can just, you know, re-download it. With that out of the way, happy animating and I will see you guys in the next video.